Can we talk about the best advice you've ever received and what was it? And then on the flip side, of course, leaving names out, the worst advice you ever received and what was it in terms of a career, um, not, not personally on you, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about a career in general in this town, being an artist. The best advice I ever received, I think, was from uh, a man named Arthur Storch, who was a Broadway director, he'd won Tonys and whatnot, and before I came to Los Angeles, I thought, you know, I'd been acting since I was very young, and but I thought, well, I'm about to make the big push now, you know, to, to come to LA, so let me just, audition for Arthur Storch if I can. My, he was a colleague of my mother. She was, she was getting her doctorate at Syracuse University. And um, so I said, well, you know, let me just go to somebody who isn't related to me, who doesn't think I hung the moon, and, and audition for him and have him say, you know, kid, I think you should be taking up arc welding or something. The stage is not for you. So I went to him and I auditioned for him. And he said, you've got what it takes. I think you should give it a try. He said, but give yourself a time limit because, and this is a wonderful line from a fabulous old Hollywood guy named Oscar Levant, because Oscar Levant said, you come, he was a New York writer, very well known in, uh, and a musician, and he was he always played this Bing Crosby sidekick or something, or the other wingman or something in those old movies, and very funny guy. And he came to New York to write, uh, came from New York here to write. And he, uh, went, and you know, that was kind of considered de classe to some people, you know, because New York is New York and Hollywood was Hollywood. And so his friend said to him, so Oscar, what do you, how is it out there living in Hollywood? What do you think? Do you like it? He says, oh, it's fabulous. He said, but you have to be careful because, you know, you wake up in the morning, you pluck an orange from the tree outside your window, you have some orange juice, it's fabulous. You do a little work, you know, then you have some coffee. Then you go down to the pool for lunch. You have a little nap after the pool. Then you have a cocktail, you have another little nap, you wake up, you're 80, <laughs> you know, because the time goes so fast here. And so Arthur Storch said, give yourself a time limit. So I was gonna give myself five years. But then I started firing on all cylinders and, you know, I needed to learn patience, but I got reward after reward and then long stretches where I had to do something else, but kept auditioning and kept getting something. And then I got my first series and then I was blessed and rolled into six more television series. And um, but so my time limit kept expanding and expanding. But I think that that is excellent advice for giving yourself a time limit because there are so many people out here trying to make it even more now than when I was here and they keep coming and now there are so many venues to work on you know YouTube and uh, all these other channels Netflix and all these other things that are making business making shows that um, it's easy to to get lost and to keep thinking well and because there is no sense of time passing here you know um, you, it, it is, you wake up, you're 80, and you don't know when, what? I was 18 when I arrived. And um, so if you're not making headway, you know, give yourself a time limit. And if you don't, you can always adjust that and add more to it, of course, as I did, you know, but give, you, give yourself some goals and some, some realistic goals. If I'm able to make a bit of a living, and I keep getting out on auditions and I land one every now and then and I, you know, I'm moving forward and my resume is growing at an acceptable rate for my personal taste, then, and you want to add another couple of years to see what happens, go ahead. But, it, it be, but for a lot of people, it's not going to work out. There isn't room for everybody who wants it. And um, so if you give yourself a time limit, then you're in charge. You know, you're in, you're in control. Uh, okay, I tried it, not for me. Back to Hewlett Packard, <laughs> or back to, <laughs> right. you know, uh -huh. to, the, to the family business or, the, or something else I wanna do, you know? So, and especially now, it, it's become so uh, common to have multiple careers. You know, true. It, when mm -hmm. our parents were growing up and their parents were growing up, you know, you did one thing forever, mostly. You didn't switch. But now it's quite common for people to have several careers in a lifetime. So give the, if you want to give this one a shot, give it a shot. Because as we said earlier, no regrets. That's what you want to shoot for in your life.
Oh. And could be my agent. It could be, yeah, actually. <laughs> maybe we should get that. Giving yourself a time limit is a, is a good way to be able to try something that you want to try, give it a good shot, and then be in control, which always makes you feel better that you are, it's not because Hollywood has rejected you and you can't possibly go on, you know? It's because you've decided that you're in charge of your life and Hollywood is not satisfying your goals or desires. And so you get in your car and you drive it where you want it to go rather than be uh, restricted by what Hollywood is willing to give you, you know? And then, leaving out names, worst advice you ever got about the business, about the pursuit, and what was it, and how did you begin to know that it was faulty advice, if, I, if possible? I, I've always kept my own counsel, you know? I haven't really taken advice from a lot of people if it doesn't ring true. I believe that if you feel that something is good, you're correct. And if you feel something is wrong, you're probably right. So I've always had a very finely developed intuition about following my intuition. The only time I haven't followed my intuition, the only times I haven't, have been the times that I was the most disappointed. Um, so I don't really, I can't remember really ever getting bad advice that I didn't recognize as bad advice right away. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course I didn't follow it. Sure. But I do mm -hmm. love that line, you know, what Johnny Carson said up to, to what Betty Davis said to Johnny Carson when he said, what would you tell a young actor coming to Hollywood? And her response right. was, take Fountain. Right, right. <laughs> Which anymore is actually very backed up, I have to say. Well, I still find it to be a pretty <laughs> oh, good artery. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. good, good. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so I, I, gosh, I can't come through for the bad advice thing, but if I think of something after you leave, sure. okay. um, I'll let I'll us know. Let you know. Okay.